Hey buddies, Sumnuts Guy here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far. In this video, we are going to teach you how to farm XP properly. I've said it before, I'll say it again. XP farms, you know, where you put down some ooze or something and you're spawning a bunch of creatures one after another into a little zone and you're just hacking at their legs through a little hole is for wieners. With all due respect, if you are an XP farm Andy, I think I said this in my hardcore playthrough as well, video coming out soon for that. Um, you just don't need XP farms in RRCraft, man. There's so many legitimate ways to get XP. So here I am teaching you legitimate ways to get XP. And we're gonna start from the early game, we're gonna hit the mid game, we're gonna go for the end game as well. Early game, early game, early game. I mean, to be fair, throughout the entirety of the game, String has great values. Grab yourself some shears, you know, get yourself some wool out of the walls, get yourselves cobwebs, uh, wherever they may be, whether it's in a village or, or otherwise. You can find little zones or remember certain things like this building right here has 39 wool in this chest. And that 39 wool in itself is literally just gonna be converted into a decent chunk of experience. Um, so grabbing all the wool, you know, the um, the hot air balloons that you can find. Hot air balloons have an absolute ton of wool in them. Uh, I usually make two shears. It takes two shears to shear the whole thing and just shear all the wool off of it. The beauty of wool is that it converts to string and then converts back to wool uh, at a lossless ratio. So one wool equals four string, four string equals one wool you can convert it back and forth. And yes, I'm talking a lot about wool at the start, and that's because it's incredibly value. But it's not the wool itself, it's of course the string, which is why cobwebs are good. You can turn cobwebs into string with a knife, with like a flint knife. So if you take cobwebs, you can turn them into, you see the knife? With a knife, you can turn them into eight strings. So each cobweb is worth eight string. You can use a flint knife, iron knife, gold knife. The flint knife, just like you use it in the beginning to chop grass and get string from the grass, that's the same flint knife that you can use. You put the cobweb in your left hand, you put the knife in your right hand, and you right click and it turns that into string. So then you're gonna find yourselves some villagers to trade with. Uh, if you can find Fletchers, that would be ideal, but fishermen uh, are also decent. You can get low enough trades, low, low, low as 15. And, uh, and these give you a lot of experience, man. I mean, I've got a buttload of levels in there for the lulls, so I'm not gonna be able to show you how much experience. However, just doing these trades like this, I mean, you can see the orbs flying in, and then you're gonna wait for them to reset. You see the green sparks, you reset, and you just keep trading him. You just keep trading in wool, and you can get a buttload of experience this way. Now, the reason you prefer Fletchers, especially if your aim is to get experience, not emeralds, um, is the Fletchers you can buy um, arrows for one emerald. So, consider s buying levels, right? You can use emeralds to purchase one emerald trades, whether it be glass from librarians or uh, arrows from Fletchers, as an example. And each of those trades gives you experience. So you're basically just buying experience with emeralds. It's really good. So normally what I'll do if I have, a, say this is a Fletcher, say he's a Fletcher, I'll do the string trade and I'll max out the string trade. Before he resets, I'll then just go and buy all of the arrows off of him as well. I get a buttload of experience, then I back off, see if he resets, hopefully he resets. And with Fletchers, you can do that over and over and over and over and over again. So cobwebs, wool, trade with, turn into string, trade with villagers, honestly, insane experience, insane. Similarly, books are also a really good way of getting emeralds because you can get a buttload of books from these libraries. I literally farm out every single bookshelf from here, get all the books. Uh, they're useful for leveling up librarians. Now paper you can also do. Um, you could get yourself a axe with fortune and efficiency and far farm birch trees because fortune actually increases the amount of logs you get from trees in RLCraft, the ones that topple. Um, so you can get fortune three and efficiency on an ax, but that's not gonna be the earliest game. Plus it's not the best ratio in my opinion. Um, so I normally do the book trades. So normally you have to do one paper trade to unlock his book trade. So do the one paper trade, wait for him to level up. And then we can do the book trade. Hopefully it's eight emeralds. Yes, lovely. So that's the best one we can find. Eight emeralds, which is really, really nice. It also uses the full stack, which is great. And then once we've unlocked it, we can also do the glass trade. So we haven't unlocked the, there it is. So now we've unlocked the glass trade. So now I would continue to sell them books, but in the same right, I'd also then sell them a bunch of uh, emeralds or I'd buy a bunch of glass off of him because that's going to be boosting my experience as well. You're basically just buying levels this way.
In the early, early game, wheat can also be a semi-decent source of experience. You need level two to farm it, um, and uh, you know it gives you it gives you a decent little bit. You know, you got you get an orb, a little bit a little bit of experience off of each one. Um, level two farming for these, and then get your level four farming up uh, for these ones. Honestly, I usually use these little farms. Say, for example, it's a waystone you use frequently, and you have zero levels, you can just jump over and you know farm a little bit. That's what I usually use the wheat for. You know, if I need like one extra level for whatever reason to to go through a waystone, or if I need one more level to get one of my skills up, or you know, I'm I'm nearly there but not quite. Um, wheat, wheat is quite good for that. Or if you set up a massive wheat farm. You'll need to be wary of Triffids and Spriggan spawning, but you can actually get a fairly decent amount of experience with very large wheat farms, and wheat grows most of the year without greenhouse glass as well, so actually it can be a decent source of experience. Some villages can be an absolute wealth of experience just by having a couple of structures. This one right here is insanely good for... Um, for wool, of course, or for string, because it's got a bunch of cobweb and it's got a bunch of... Uh, of wool, but it's also got a bunch of wood in these chests. So I always check these chests and grab any birch. They don't always have birch, but if you say get a you know a, a bunch of birch logs, you can turn those birch logs into paper, and that's more experience. Then you've also got these these libraries as well that have buttloads of books in them. Uh, so some villages can give you a lot of experience in these ways. These campsites are also another great source of wool, uh, and they also usually have a little bit of the loot and some healing items and stuff as well. So definitely these, these are very good early game structures for both experience and some heals and whatnot. Those are pretty passive and very safe ways to gain some experience, but if you want to be slightly more, well, it's not really risky because we're going to be going to killing passives. Um, that guy's not passive though, so the the intention here is get yourself a mount. If you get a mount, um, an iron lance uh, is one of the earliest weapons that can one-shot all the passive mobs, apart from like the arrow swords and the makas, the, the big boys that have lots of health, but an iron lance will one-shot all the sheeps, cows, pigs, all that good stuff because you gain a 200% damage bo bonus when you're mounted, and obviously being being mounted is just going to allow you to get around a little bit faster. And you can just literally wander around, and I can even one-shot these guys. A little sketchy because I don't have any armor on in this early game, so I'll take heavy damage. But you know, you can even... Uh, you, the extra 200% extra damage, and the speed that you have... That was a nice crit. And the speed that you have basically means that you can farm these quite safely. And bear in mind that, of course, Jousts are actually passive if they don't have an alpha near them, and as long as you one-shot them. Um, so running around on your horse and killing one-shottable enemies, uh, preferably passives if you want to be safe, is a very good way to go. Another good source of early game experience is taking advantage of er early game structures that you uh, you can do quite easily. Now, as an example, dilapidated battle towers like this one will frequently have spawners in them. Like this one right here will frequently have spawners in them, but because they're broken down and it's daytime There's too much light for them to actually spawn so these won't spawn anything. I can just chill here now if I wanted to be super efficient I can Create some cover around this so that it gets darker and then they start spawning and it's quite controlled And I can just deal with the one spawner. I can just kill them as they come out um, As they spawn and then sort of once I've killed, you know, eight eight to ten of them, I'm not sure how many they spawn, you then want to destroy the spawner. Breaking the spawners gives a bunch of experience. So if you just want to be quick and safe, jump in, break the spawner, grab the free, free XP, fantastic. Spawners give you a decent chunk of experience. If you want to be uber efficient, uh, you can then start to spawn things out of there, kill them in a controlled manner, and then destroy the spawner before uh, it spawns the last thing and destroys itself, so you still get that experience. That's how you're going to maximize experience from spawners. Perfect, so here we have a much larger dilapidated battle tower, and these ones can be really good as well because they've got a lot more spawners. However, they can certainly be more risky, but as you can see, there's still enough light, there's enough holes in the walls that this isn't spawning anything. So I can come in, I can grab some loot, uh, and I can come in and break these spawners if I want to as well. Now, they, a few of the uh, ones higher up might spawn some stuff, uh, depending on exactly what blocks are broken around them. Oh, there's no spawners in that level. You know, if, if you got unlucky and this wall had, like, say, those two and that one wasn't broken, this might be able to spawn stuff. So just being a little bit careful in these types of dilapidated towers, you can still get a decent chunk of experience. So we do have something spawning there. So blazes are spawning up there, so we can either... What we could do if we really wanted to is we could try and be sneaky and open up the walls a little bit more to stop them from spawning. But if I don't feel safe enough with that, I can maybe, you know, run in and try and... You know, cheese one of these 
and just leave. <laughs> can maybe build up to it and break it. Point being, uh, spawner's a good experience. Breaking those safely is a good idea. These boats can also be a good source of early game experience or early to mid game experience as they have quite a few spawners below deck. They have, I believe, five zombie spawners down here. Um, and as you can see, I believe with the glass here, I don't know if they can spawn. With the glass here, it doesn't seem like they can spawn. So I can either cover the glass and fight them if I wanted to, you know, I can make like a little, even like a little mob grinder thing. I could put a block there and, you know, chop them in the legs. I'm not a huge fan of creating mob farms, but, you know, doing that isn't, it's a little cheesy, but it's not, it's not that bad. Um, so I could, again, just break these spawners for free experience, or I can then fight and then break the spawners once I've killed at least, you know, five, six ones from each little thingamajiggy. Then you got reverse battle towers where the top two definitely won't be spawning anything, so you can quite safely jump down and grab these. However, there's a dragon next to one, so it's not going to be that safe, of course. Um, assuming there's no dragon next to it, you can come break these quite easily. Um, you could even, you know, mine through the walls and, and you know, get these through the walls. Uh, just giving you lots of different ideas. So I've been flying around looking for two sort of mini structures in particular, and I haven't been able to find them for a while. They're basically, there's two small cobblestone structures that have zombie spawners in them. They're ones, ones like this size, a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, a little bit bigger. Uh, it's got two zombie spawners and a chest. Um, the What's really nice about these is you can aggro the zombies from the outside. You can be like outside, you can mine, you can mine in, you know, you can hack them through the hole. Or, you know, you can aggro them and they'll follow, they'll come outside and start burning in the sun. As long as you take the last hit on them, you'll get the experience for that and you get the drops for it. So you can actually let the sun do a lot of the damage for you and then you just take them, take a one shot basically. Um, and that can be quite a good way of farming experience as well. There's a little one like this with two spawners in it. And then there's a much larger one, which is uh, more like sort of that size, Fa fairly, well, not fairly large compared to other structures, but, you know, about four times the size of uh, the other one, and I believe it does have eight spawners in it, so it's four times the spawners as well. You can get lots of experience from those. Once you hit the mid game and you should have, say, diamond armor with maybe protection uh, enchants on them, decent weapon, a lot of the same advice stands, still wool books, make the most of them. Um, you know, the, the the small, easy structures that are easy to do, you know, quickly taking advantage of spawners, still great for the mid game, even late game, that's all still valid information. But hopefully now that you're in the mid game, firstly, you can take on some more dangerous dungeons, you can be a little bit more brazen. And secondly, hopefully you'll have gotten the education enchant, and this is huge. Education three is a massive boost to the experience that you get uh, when killing things. You can see I've got an absolute god pike here, but you got education three under the rune piercing capabilities, and it it gives a massive boost to all of the experience that you'll get from killing anything. So why am I standing in the dark here, you wonder? Well, I'm just standing near uh, a couple of structures. Just I'm just getting things to spawn in these structures to so you show you how many mobs there are spawning. I mean, so many mobs to kill, so many, uh, so many um, spawners to break for the experience. There's literally a doom-like right here as well. So doom-likes... Um, are, maybe I should give myself night vision. The, uh, the cats come to hang out. Hey, beans. Um, we got night vision now so we can see, but yeah, basically what I'm, what I'm getting at here, guys, is dungeons. Just, just get education three and do dungeons. There's no need to build farms. Look at this. There's so many mobs. And now that you're mid game with diamond armor and some protection, you should be able to handle this, uh, fairly easily. Um, and it's just a lot more fun as well. I mean, so many mobs, so many spawners. You go to a doom like, go to a doom like, and it's just room, spawners, spawners, turns, twists, spawners, rooms and loot. So you're going to be getting a buttload of loot here as well. Just so many spawners, so many mobs to kill. Get yourself education, get into some dungeons, play them safe, play them careful, even if you want to, block off the pathways, you know, chop them in the knees, whatever the case may be, whatever you feel you need to do. But I have the most fun jumping around, hacking and slashing personally. So uh, so if you feel like you can manage that, just jump in there with your education three weapon and start hacking and slashing, man. Seriously, best way to get experience, just get into a dungeon, start clapping booties. One thing I would note uh, in the mid game is avoid thorns. You want to avoid thorns and advanced thorns and burning thorns because these will eat up your armor's durability to deal damage to people that attack you 
but it will also consume a lot more experience from your mending or advanced mending to repair that armor. So thorns or advanced thorns or burning thorns will actually eat up your experience. So I would avoid those at the mid game when experience is probably very important to you. And finally, when you get to the end game, you can pretty much do whatever the heck you want. I mean, end game experience isn't going to be that important anymore. However, if you get to the point where maybe you want to make a brand new god weapon or tool or I don't know, whatever the case may be um, in the end game, I mean, you can just do whatever you want because you're almost unkillable. Um, however, if I do need to farm experience in the end game, what I would usually do is go to a thick battle tower. That's usually what I do. The thick battle towers have insane amounts of spawners and mobs. First thing I do is go to the top uh, and destroy the uh, spawners up here because these guys are really annoying. Then I deal with the golem that's underneath here. I shoot him a little bit and then I jump down and kill him. No problemo. But then what I'll usually do, and it depends. If I, if I, if I have a little bit of time, sometimes I'll just dig down and I'll start letting the spawners spawn. Uh, so that there's a bunch of mobs ready for me to kill and then I'll come out hello and then I'll come out so you can see we're already starting to get a good number of enemies spawning and then I'll come out and I will just walk down the floors I'll run around you know dodging the enemies and I'm just trying to activate as many of the spawners as I can I mean I can go around killing things while I'm here as well I don't have my good weapon out uh, I can run around killing things as well but obviously the experience might get trapped up here because what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going oh okay <laughs> but what I'm going to be doing is spawning as many things as I can, running through here, spawning as many things as I can, and just basically going down to the bottom floor. And then I'm going to be waiting down to the bottom floor for them all to come down. And I've, I mean, you do that and you will have, you know, you spend a few minutes up at the top. Uh, you know, don't come down quite as fast as I did. Spend a few minutes up there, you know, maybe, maybe a minute on each floor or less. Um, you know, getting a few kills, getting those spawners activated and then coming down you are going to get hundreds of mobs i used to do uh, uh I, I used to do what was dubbed the pull every mob in a dungeon and then sit and eat a sandwich while thorns kills everything in the dungeon trick <laughs> that's what chat dubbed it when i do that but honestly my frames went from 75 frames to two or three frames per second just because of how many mobs there were if you do this the way that i'm doing not the way that I'm speedily doing it right now, but the way that I do it properly, doing it a little bit slower, you will get so many mobs, so many, so much experience. Just fo focus these witches early because the witches are a big pain in the butt. Huge experience, huge number of mobs in thick battle towers. You can take the same principle with other dungeons as well, but I think these uh, these thick battle towers are the most concentrated number of spawners. That's in the easiest way to funnel a bunch of enemies sort of down to the bottom floor to, to, to you. And finally, when it comes to the end, end game, you can also farm the Lycanite bosses. Asmodeus, Rehavart, Amalgalich, they drop insane amounts of experience. I think Amalgalich drops 8,000 experience. And if you happen to get a Blighted Amalgalich, don't panic because Blighted Amalgalich is only 2.5% more difficult, theoretically, more difficult than normal Amalgalich. If you're wondering why, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll break it down. Um, but basically farming the bosses jobs gives a buttload of experience. You get 8,000 experience uh, for killing Amalgalich. If he's blighted, you get 40 times the experience. That's 320k experience just from killing one blighted Amalgalich. Hundreds of levels, absolutely crazy amounts of experience as well as nether stars and other drops. It does cost um, obsidian and diamonds to uh, to summon the boss, uh, but it's definitely a worth trade in terms of the experience and nether stars that you get. Lastly, a little bit of advice to avoid wasting levels is utilizing XP tomes. So XP tomes, you can fill them up with 30 levels. That's 1,395 experience equals exactly 30 levels. So if I have exactly 30 levels on me and I, uh, I can put that into an experience tome uh, and then I can bring that out of an experience tome whenever I want. So if I have 60 levels on me, I can then put that into experience tomes. The thing is, is levels are more valuable the more levels you have. And some actions like traveling, enchanting, leveling up your level up reloaded skills will take set levels instead of level based experience, if that makes sense. If you're at 60 levels, 60 to 61 is like the same as like 0 to 40 or some something crazy, right? 
So if I spend one level to travel and I have 60 levels, I could have put all of that experience into experience tomes and then literally filled like two, three, four experience, no, more like three, four, five experience tomes with um, with full sets of level 30 levels, done the traveling or the enchanting, whatever the case may have been with much less levels in the in the on my person. And then I can pull those levels back out of the experience tomes when I need them again. So being clever, utilizing experience tomes and minimizing experience wastage is also a really good idea. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. I go live on my Twitch channel pretty much every day except Monday and Friday. And it'd be great to see some of you guys there. Regardless, hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care.